بانگ شرر زد مال بر من حال دلم را تو دگر کن عمر من خست در این کوچه ها گذشت نال سر کن عمر من خست در این کوچه ها گذشت نال سر کن I see everything, it's not, uh, it's very bad. My name is Zahra, and I'm 16, I come from Afghanistan. You know, when I came uh, here, I saw all of you. Uh, I understand the meaning of humanity, you know. Our boat was going down, so sorry to take all the things that we had. Uh, our luggage, our bags, it's true that we lost everything that we had. But we are alive and we can't do anything. My name is Eric Kempson, um, I live on the island of Lesbos. I'm an artist, I carve olive wood, um, I paint. I've lived on the island for 16 years. I have one daughter and my wife. I'm not an activist, I'm just a humanitarian. I mean, I'm just a human being that helps other human beings. We've always had refugees, always, time, yeah. but mainly men. Mm -hmm. uh, last year you, we got women and a few children. Mm -hmm. But come February, it was getting bad, we were getting a lot of babies, and one day I walked down the beach and I found the little life jackets, and that was it. Then I decided I've got to do something. The refugees get to Izmir, they meet the smugglers, and then they, they go to an office in Izmir and get a ticket for the boat. From there, they'll get a bus or a truck, to the destination. Then they take the boat down to the beach, which can take a good few hours. Then they give the ticket to the guy that's in charge of the boat. From there, they get the boat across to the north of Lesbos. Did you spot one, Eric? Well, there's one well over. Yeah, two. And Frontex is there? Because they've also tried to stop them, man. Eh? Were they? To smuggle people is a lot easier than smuggling in drugs. Because Drugs have to reach their destination. People don't have to. They release them in storms and everything, they don't care. They release them with bad equipment, they don't care. On a rough day, they still send them. It doesn't matter. You have no fishermen out there, you have no coast guard out there, and yet the smugglers still send them. As long as they get the money and they push them out off that coastline, they don't care what happens to them. 
So for now, what we do, we take the, the families and the women and children, we take them up in cars, because this is about two and a half kilometers. It's up there. Only half? You see that town there? Yeah. That's where we got to get to. Yeah. The men will have to walk. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. They will photograph you, they'll take your names, okay. and then they put you into a camp either here, or here, there's two camps. Two camps. Okay. Okay. So they put you into the camp. You might be there for two, three days. Okay. Maybe two days. Okay. And then they come and they give you your papers, okay. and then you go. Okay, sir. So. We got a lot of abuse for what we were doing. I mean, it's eased off a bit now. We got a tremendous amount of abuse from everyone. And then you get cars pull up, and they're calling us malacca and shouting and screaming at us because they say it's our fault they're coming, and they have to make them suffer. You know, if we make them suffer, they won't come. We are seven hours in the water. Our board is totally finished in the water. We call the Greece police, we call the Turkish police, but nobody came. Our old fisherman came and he saved our life. If somebody asked that, can I come like you that you pass the base and uh, should I take that risk that you took? I said no. Sometimes the machine is not working, some of the boat is broke. Sometimes the weather is bad. If there is a big wind or big waves, it can turn off the ship and we, are, we can die. It was a journey of life and death, but we have to do uh, because uh, a lot of problems, we are helpless. There's a lot of things going on out here. There's still a lot of things going on out here. I've watched so many boats go down out here over the years because of towback policy and the amount of people died. You see a boat coming over, they disable the engine, they throw a rope on the front of it and they tow it back into Turkish waters. And they were towing them back into waters two kilometers out from the Turkish shore and disabling the boats and leaving them there. You know, if the Turkish Coast Guard didn't pick them up, what happens to them? Layli, 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 John, 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 Marakushti Barmo. دای قشلاق نامدی وای وای مرا کشتی برمان از بالا باران آمد یارم به دالان آمد لیلی 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 جان 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 مرا کشتی برمان یک بوسه طلب کدم چشمش به گریان آمد لیلی 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 جان 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 مرا کشتی برمان I have a complicated life in about five years. I have three journeys or four journeys before Greek. My first journey from my village, it's called Derful. This is my first journey and I go to uh, Damas. I sit in Damas about two years. After I go back another journey uh, to a place called Salamia. I'm sitting about one year uh, after I come to Turkey. Uh, alone I come to Turkey. After my family, all my family come to Turkey. Uh, I marry um, a Turkish man, uh, but uh, I think uh, it's a bad choice. So now we divorce. Hmm? My sister now in Denmark. Now I follow my sister. Uh, my brother won't stay in Turkey now. One year, two year, I don't know. You, you know, it's life, all time change. Just, this is my life. Mm -hmm. What's your story? <laughs> so until here, we spent about $3,000. We hadn't any money, but we got land from other people. Most of people, they sit our, our house to get this money. I sell my home and I lost the money. I sell this a new home in, in Salamia and lost my money. 500 from one relative and 200 from one relative. We collect the money, it became about $3,000. And here, we spend money. Now I lost everything, so I don't want to remember. Some people, they don't have this money. So they're going by own self. Just, he don't care about if he die or not. Still, we have anything, we are here, but the life is very, very bad here. These people are from the war zone. They are entitled to uh, shelter, clothing, food, and medical. Yeah. That's what they're entitled to. They get nothing like that here. 
they get abused. All the help that the refugees are getting now are by individuals around Europe and around the world with a big heart. They're thinking, God, this is out of order. We need to do something. This is one of the best uh, places in Lesbos for the refugees. The camps are horrible. We uh, are trying to get buses here to bring them to the big camp near Mitilini, uh, where they will get their papers and continue their journey through Europe. We have water, we have food, and trying to do the best that we can to, to make them feel safe here. They stay here all from half a day to one day. Some of them uh, sleep here. And if they do so, we try to give them mattresses. There's uh, about two or three buses every day. And you know, we just feel that people are sitting four and two seats with children. And They have traveled for a long time. So they come here and they are, you know, they are behaving very, very well. They are very, very nice people. It's, of course, very hard for an island to receive so many people. In the name of God, the composition is the most merciful. Uh, my name is Hussein and I'm 24 years old, I'm from Afghanistan, and uh, I'm immigrant in this country. Yeah, my name is Aladi, and I'm from Afghanistan, and i just been, work, been walking and I just come here from Afghanistan to here. Just big, big deserts there is. Nobody can see, just you and nothing else. Uh, now, we sit here. My father was a refugee from Irani, he was going away from his country about 26 years ago uh, and he was a refugee and was uh, traveling the, the, in Tur over Turkey like these people are doing, so kind of the same trip. I kind of feel with my heart that I have to help in some way and pay back what, what he had. So you are round ones? All of you? Um, so next bus. Next bus. Next bus for you. What, you two this? days. Two days to walk. Very hard. So when they pulled up a sign saying bus and your mark, you go to Mitalini for papers. Okay? okay. I feel okay. Yeah. I'm so cool. Yeah. I feel like flying in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I could go and ride in space right up. Yeah. Damas, uh, you don't see Damas. Do you visit Damas? Uh, you lost so much because it's ancient. In my country, we don't sleep. <laughs> uh, 20, 24 hours, we don't sleep. Especially Damas and uh, Aleppo. When you see this uh, beautiful city, all time work, all time happy, all time fight, all time all that. So when you uh, look, yeah, uh, everything destroyed. That's so bad. It'll make you sad. مسافر یا سمن دارد تنی تو هوای شهر من دارد تنی تو بیا کی ما و تو یک جا بگردیم هنوز بوی وطن دارد تنی تو most of the Syrians that come through, I mean, they're architects, solicitors, lawyers, politicians, doctors, amazing amount of people, very, very well educated. 
uh, and, and very wealthy, the ones we get coming through. This is why we concentrate on the Syrians, because they don't have a clue to survive in the wild. They really don't have a clue. The Afghans, Pakistans, from Iraq, Iran, they can survive, they can sleep on floors. You know, they can do their business in the wild, but the Syrians have never done this before in their life. You know, when you get the two groups together, you can see a difference. One morning, uh, I had a group of uh, Afghanistans and a group of Syrians. The Afghanistans were in the rubbish bin. It was raining, it was cold. They got polythene out, everything else. They worked as a team. They got a fire going. They all sat around it to keep warm. The Syrians are sitting there wondering why they can't get Wi-Fi, and they're shaking, and they're freezing cold, sitting in wet clothes. They're just like any other European people. I like it, very given photo. photo. Ah, you want to be a photographer? Okay, a photographer. I love it, your jobs, because your job is very beautiful. And I'm in Afghanistan, was very attempted this, your jobs, very attempted. The situation in Afghanistan is not bad and not good, it's normal. But unfortunately there is no human right in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a beautiful country, but Afghanistan is a war. Just death, nothing else. No work, no OUSIS, no study. We can improve uh, my family in Afghanistan. Somebody says it's Taliban, somebody says it's OUSIS, it, Daesh. We don't know who are they and what are they fighting, fighting for. They killed my father, they killed my mother. So, my wife, she have. 15 stitch in her head. If they know that you are working for government, they firstly they or you say they sent you a card that you have to leave that job. And then if you don't leave that study or if you don't leave that job that you are doing for government, they will kill you. We are not original Afghan I am. Our grandparents came from another country in Afghanistan and they got the citizenship from Romania. In 1943, Afghanistan was like a Paris, very beautiful. 13 years, old, years ago, mm -hmm. my family uh, came to Iran, and I was born in Iran. Okay, but uh, they uh, leave Afghanistan and go to Iran illegally. Even we are not safe in Iran. If the Afghans work in Iran, they are also in a very worse condition. Iranian people uh, think Afghan is enemy. I don't know. Because we, if we want to send my children in the uh, school or university, uh, they don't accept Afghan people. Rubbish. All the port is full of rubbish. Around the road, to the port, to the place they stay, they don't respect the place they come. You understand? They don't respect. We try to help them as we can. They came here, they want to take their papers and to leave. They don't want to stay in Lesbos. None of them want to stay here. What? All of them want to go to Europe. When they take the paper, they take the taxi to go to the port. Good business. This we come here for picking some paper 
to going uh, the another country. I come here from 5 in the morning. I am two days in the sea now sleeping. So I just I want to go to the camp just for take a rest. Even I want not change clothes, not take shower. You see the people in the street. Some ladies who are pregnant, they are still in the street. There is people here, they cannot read or write. They are shouting in us. They lead the guys like a, a cheat. It's not a human. They shouting, they beat him like uh, animals. Work the respect for the people. You know, we're human beings, all of us. Regardless of what we look like, what shape we are or whatever. We're still all human beings. If you go into London and you see all the mixed races, they all work together, they're all in the markets together, they all chat to each other, everyone talking to everyone else. The grassroots are just normal people. Respect me, I respect you. You help me today, I help you to do tomorrow. One day my country it will be in peace. You come in my country as a guest, I said welcome. I never looking for you in a different way. They, we give them food, give them clothes. Uh, our doctors uh, go and examine and the big one and the children. We give them medicines. Of course we help them. I can give my hair to any, to anyone who would ask for me. But I can't put anyone above my family and my children. Do you understand what I mean? It, it is the biggest wish for a man or for a human that they die with their family or in their family's hand. I want to, don't worry about my family. Now I'm all time worried. For me, I'm not thinking about myself anymore. I have family. If I feel I, I live in something bad, but I want my family to live in something good. I can't explain, but it is the happens of life that you are together with your family. The politicians in the last 30 years have made one hell of a mess in Europe and around the world, one hell of a mess. You look what's gone on around the world in the last 30 years. It's disgusting, absolutely disgusting. There needs to be a bit of humanitarianism in the politicians. They're completely out of reality. They don't know what reality is. They look at these things on a little box and it doesn't sink in here. It doesn't go in. You come out here on the beaches and you watch women and children fall in the water and going under the water and you've got to pull them out. And you see the suffering, that's different. Show them reality, how it really is. And see what happens to them a week's time when they've actually seen it and been part of it, rather than screaming and shouting about the immigrants coming into our country and everything else. Bring them here and see the humanitarian side of it. When you get a baby in the water, then tell me. Then tell me what they're screaming about, you know. This is a memorable journey of my life. The first time I saw uh, all, all of countries, I mean, you can see here, there are people of South Africans, Syrians, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Uh, we are like here, uh, you can say family, not family, but you can say a family. If you live like an animal, you can go and live in a Pakistan or some in Somalia. But we don't live, like such a life. We want a life like uh, advanced people, like English people, like your life, like European people life. Because I dreamed of a better life, but I see that treat is here very bad. It's worse than the dog. The dog here is treating better than us. Why? The dog now is better than the human? We are human beings. Just think about human beings, not live Anything, Muslim, non-Muslim, live by water, only human beings. So we came here for better life, but how better life is this? 50 euros this food, three times. But no half money, no food, die here. We didn't want cash money, we didn't want cash money, just we want some bread, some water. Last 24 hours we, have, we don't take anything to eat, to drink. I can uh, fix myself. What about the children? Uh, there are also little kids, families along us. 
but uh, they have nothing to eat or, or to drink. There was a big sign there, just uh, uh, free food for all. Yesterday they just brought some facilities here for just making some foods and uh, they uh, just brought some cameras and just from left and right of that they just made pictures and some videos to showing the world that we do really give us food but it's not really like that you know today there's nothing any food last night it was there was no food for us kindly i request please help us we are so tired I'm poor man and I have three kids. So just we want help from the European country. They told us if you have a problem and you cannot wait here, you can go and return to your country. But uh, if I didn't have any problem, why I came here? When we arrived, they took us, they feed us water, milk, juice. They speak kindly to us, that's what we want. I want to go. I, I don't want to come and mm, stay here. It's clear. I have no uh, right here. As a human, I'm not here. I prefer nice word instead of sandwiches and eat and water. What to tell you else? I don't want food. I want freedom. This is important. Putting all these walls up all over Europe is ridiculous. The waste of time, the waste of money. These brick walls don't help. People are tunnel under them, they go round them, they find another way. And that's what they do. We're not homeless. We have we have a home. Syria our home and we will return to it. Soon enough.